So the first three things that we manage on calls on patients is called the ABC, the airway, breathing, and circulation. So the first thing is to see, is there a clear path from the mouth all the way down to the lungs, which is called the airway, that could be uh, compromised through oh, something as simple as the tongue, or fluids, or it could be also like in an anaphylactic shock, the airway could be closing down on its own. So uh, the first thing we manage, manage the airway, the adjunct that they're going to be inserting in the mouth is called a neuropharyngeal airway, and it is used to lift the tongue out of the way. They also can uh, go through uh, with, a, uh, with a suction unit and start uh, removing any fluid that might be in the airway. The second thing uh, after A, B is breathing, so they are there to um, manage the person's uh, ability to breathe. So at the moment with an opiates, one of the first things that will be affected is their ability to breathe on their own. So this is what um, Richard is doing right now with the BVM. He started to breathe for the patient. Um, by taking a pulse, looking for hemorrhage, um, the paramedic then can assess the uh, circulation. In order to determine uh, that why the person is unconscious, they will go through a series of assessment, a series of questions to try to establish what's called a differential diagnosis, to try to figure out why is the patient, a person unresponsive and not breathing, because um, opioid overdose can be um, similar to a lot of other presentations. It could look like a stroke, it can look like a head injury, uh, low blood sugar, um, and over, even overdoses on other products. Because the vast majority of overdoses that we see are not related to opiates. Via opiates are a very small minority of overdoses we deal with. So what Colin will be doing now is going to take a blood sugar. It's the exact same equipment that diabetics are using at home. So they will test the blood sugar to see if it's low or high, which could again be mimicking or look like an opiate overdose. So there are multiple ways of giving Narcan. Narcan can be uh, given uh, just under the skin to provide a very slow absorption, which is sometimes what is needed. Uh, it can also go into a big muscle in the arm. And it can also be inserted uh, vaporized into the nose, which is highly vas uh, vascularized. I mean, there's a lot of blood vessel there to absorb the medication. Um, the advantage of going into the nose is that you don't need any needle. It's only a little um, atomizer that will basically uh, make the um, Narcan into a very fine uh, mist and it's going to be absorbed into the nose. So there's absolutely uh, no needles invo involved. And uh, this, uh, these three methods can be used by all paramedics. The um, advanced care paramedic, like Richard, uh, have another uh, trick up their sleeve is they can go directly into the bloodstream. So. They decided at first to go uh, intranasal, so right in the nose. So that's why uh, that's what Richard is doing. So the Narcan comes into a little vial. So they're going to withdraw into a syringe, and then they're going to be uh, injecting the uh, or vaporizing the Narcan into the nose. Okay, and go back to bagging for me. So they just gave the, the drug in the nose. What's very important is you have to give it very quickly in the nose to make the uh, right uh, the good mist. If it's given too slowly, it's going to be very large droplet. It's going to go into the uh, through the mouth and through the stomach, and then it's cannot be absorbed anymore. Okay, how's our bagging going? Compliance isn't the greatest, but okay, it's a little tough getting it up on, but. So after giving the intranasal injection, we're going to give it a little bit of time to work and see if we're going to have any improvement in the patient's status.